Hello, this is Amarjot Singh. I'm back uh, again with uh, another information video about something that is of interest to many people. I was asked a question about uh, owner operator LMIA as compared to investor visa. And I will give my reaction and analysis how they are different. And of course, as usual, you can type your comments and ask your questions. If I have time, I will read the answer, I'll read the question and then give you my answer. But uh, let us go back to the original question that was asked to me, what is the difference between owner operator LMIA and the investor visa. So let's look at investor visa first. Uh, investor visa, which is actually not investor, it's called entrepreneur. Many of the entrepreneur programs in Canada are run by provinces. They have their own system and own procedure and own policies and requirements about how much money to invest in that province so that you can qualify for nomination leading to PR. So some provinces require more, some less. I know Ontario is very expensive. Uh, Alberta does not even have an entrepreneur program. BC has it, Manitoba has it, Saskatchewan, Nova Scotia, and other provinces have a nomination system. You uh, give them your proposal, how much money you want to invest, what kind of business you want to operate. And then based on certain criteria, based on certain grid of the points that they manage, you will get the nomination and ultimately you will apply for PR. Now, what is uh, owner operator LMIA? So let us uh, assume if uh, somebody is running a company in overseas and they want to start their own company here, they can, uh, instead of going through nomination, they can apply for a LMIA so that LMIA will allow the owner or the senior manager of the company to run the company on their own. The advantage is that uh, you get directly a uh, work permit and then you can bring your wife and children if, if, if you have one so that they can live with you. It's a, it's a short process, but LMIA requires uh, certain things to happen. You know, your company must be established. You must be able to prove that you are the uh, major decision maker, a major controller, major manager of the business. And uh, eventually uh, you will get the LMIA. But LMIA is done by Service Canada. Service Canada has a, is a separate entity from immigration. Sometimes they are very uh, discretionary on whether to give the LMI or not. Uh, the cost is $1,000, of course. Uh, there's no advertising requirement, so this is one variation in the regular LMI that there's no uh, advertising requirements, but you must also uh, be able to control uh, uh, the business so that you can show that you are the main decision maker of the business. Uh, you should be also able to show that you are creating jobs at least for one Canadian or permanent resident and or you are able to transfer some skills based on whatever you're trying to do. Uh, you should also be able to show what is a business plan, whether the business is uh, going to survive. It's, it's uh, some business that has the potential of being successful. Um, uh, you should also, of course, uh, uh, you know, have the company incorporated, uh, have a bank account and tax ID number and perhaps maybe one or two employees so that uh, you should be able to demonstrate that the business can run and make some profit, make some uh, salary. But ultimately, Service Canada is the one who will decide whether you are worthy of the LMIA so that you can run and start and, and sustain the business. Uh, the the big difference is that this is a LMIA process. This is not a PR process. This is nothing else. This is just an LMIA process. Once you get the LMIA, you'll start working. You'll get the work permit, and you can bring your dependent spouse and dependent children. Uh, eventually, if you are an express entry candidate, that will give you additional points in express entry, at least 50 points. So that is a big advantage. But let us look at the situation where where the entrepreneur does not have enough education or does not have high marks in English or maybe is over age, uh, then I I don't think that he will even make any any way close to the express entry requirement because he will not even get the, the even if he gets 50 points through LMIA, but he will not have enough points to take him above 440 or 450. So that way it is a no brainer. I think this is a bad way he should go for uh, investment and get a provincial nomination. So that might be a better idea. But yes, if you have uh, otherwise uh, enough points for express entry and you are just lacking close to about 50 points, then owner operator LMIA makes sense to move forward. So eventually you can run your own business, you can pay yourself salary and you know, you can you test the Canadian waters as far as what business to do. 
and then within time, um, you know, you will be able to qualify for express entry. So that's a big difference between uh, owner operator and and uh, the PNP investor. All right, so I see some questions. Let me see see some questions. Uh, Pradeep man, can we apply online permit if you have LMIA? Uh, Pradeep man, yes, you can apply online work permit if you have LMIA. Online work permit is just an online application for work permit, depending on where you are. If you are overseas or even if you can actually, you can do an online application, go to IRCC, uh, make the GCT, and then you can apply online. Of course, there's no problem. All right, Pratiman, he's the same guy. So Pratiman, I think I've answered your question. I hope, uh, uh, let me know if you can hear my voice okay and uh, if you understood my answer, yes. So all these online applications can be done by anybody from anywhere. A lot of people ask me for Express Entry, for example, if they are in Canada, if they're traveling from out, uh, to outside country, can they apply from there? Yes, it's an online application. You can apply from anywhere as long as you have the requisite documents and and formalities uh, covered you can pretty much apply anywhere in the world just a computer is required all right so what are the questions uh do we have we have already answered this question by pratik man uh i've made uh, many videos about uh, lmias uh, from different countries where people got a job offer and that they have uh, you know a different kind of uh, letter has which was made by brokers and other people who are offering fraudulent uh, job offers and i have not found anybody with a genuine job offer or genuine forget about lmia so all of this is bogus so you've got to be very careful in uh, who you are dealing with and i always tell them uh, you have to ask them fundamental questions is, are you licensed with iccrc or are you a licensed lawyer in canada or a member of quebec notary if you are not in one of these three the chances are the person who's selling you or offering you any job is, is focused, it's not going to fly. All right, so this is one big, uh, you know, factor to look at. Let's see who else is asking questions. Uh, uh, Akshay Gorilla, hello, sir. Yes, Akshay Gorilla, what's the question? You've got, uh, got to ask me the question. What's the question before we run out of time? Ask me the question, come with the questions, come ask me a pointed question, direct question, uh, so that I can try to answer your question. Uh, and then we can go from there. So LMIA, I've made too many, uh, many uh, videos about LMIA. LMIA, it's quite dicey. It is a difficult thing to do LMIA in Canada. Uh, it takes a lot of time, close to about four to six months sometimes. Uh, advertising is required in many, uh, more than one or two uh, uh, mediums in online or on the newspaper or trade journals to show that we, we are in shortage of that uh, critical talent we need. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I always tell them, especially people who are overseas that uh, Canada, um, you know, some regions have uh, much uh, unemployment. It could be six to eight percent in some cases in, in between 18 and 35. So do not think that the jobs are replete here. You know, jobs are not here for everybody. Yes, for critical shortage uh, areas like engineers, soft engineers. And so, yes, you will find LMIA easy, but not in other semi skill maybe like uh, food production, uh, sometimes kitchen workers or maybe farm workers and, uh, you know, maybe perhaps caregivers. It is not that easy to get a successful LMIA and, and there's always a non-refundable um, $1,000 fees that, that uh, they will lose. It has It is done by the employer, not by you, right? So it's not done by the candidate. All right, Akshay Gorilla, hi, uh, yes, what's the question? I'm looking for a question. Hi, uh, somebody asking me a question. Uh, all right, so, so what is that question? Hi, sir. I know. Hi, sir. What's the question? Let's jump to the question. Uh, what's the question? Thanks, sir. How can I contact with you? I'm a student in Ireland. While I'm staying out of, can I apply for my ex card expires? Any chance can apply for uh, Pradeep Man, if I can understand your question, you are in Ireland and you were uh, uh, on a student visa in Ireland and your student visa got expired in Ireland and you are now thinking of coming to Canada, maybe perhaps as a student. So this is one of the great factors that the Canadian visa officer will look at. What is your true intention? If you were a student in Ireland, did you actually complete the study? And how did do you transition from one program to another? Does it make sense? Or you're trying to just escape to Canada because you have run out of options of staying or immigrating in Ireland or UK? So that's a, that's a big, big question mark on you. So I hope you are able to satisfy them. 
you know, whatever your true intentions are. Shoaib sure, Malik, yeah, always so I'm good. Uh, Shoaib sure, Malik, uh, ask me the question. Uh, guys, don't uh, don't uh, bother about hello, hello or hi or something. I'm good. Just tell me your question. If I know the answer, I'll tell you. If I do not know the answer, I'll tell you I do not know the answer. All right. So Ahmed Zarok is saying hi. Which fast to process names to apply for Alberta immigration nominee program and express entry? Ahmed Zarok, uh, this is a uh, question that requires more analysis on AINP uh, requires that you are present in Alberta and you have some experience and work permit in Alberta only then you can apply. But express entry, you can apply from anywhere. There's no requirement. So you have to look at, do you satisfy the requirements of one or both or just, just the other? So express entry, of course, if you have 440 plus points, you can assume between eight to 10 months or close to less than one year. But uh, AINP, if you get the AINP, uh, let's say in six months or eight months, and then you have to again wait for 15 to 18 months again for PR through the federal route. All right, so that's what you have to analyze, you know, where do you stand? Who else is asking a question? Naresh Marajan is asking a question. Please let me know the entire process for getting to it. Naresh Marajan, this is like asking, you know, please let me know the entire contents of Bible. What is in Bible? You know, this is a long question. Uh, trade certification, wherever you are in Canada, I hope you're in Canada, you have, just like, for example, I can tell you about Alberta. So in Alberta, you can go to their office, go to tradesecrets.gov.ab, look at what the, uh, the forms are, fill up the forms and then apply from there. And they have the requirement based on whether you're, you're qualifying taking the examination based on experience or some qualification from a different province or different country. So they will tell you, and that's how you can apply. But most necessarily you must be in Alberta on a work permit to be able to apply, otherwise you cannot apply. So this is something that you need to look at the website and I'm sure most other provinces have the similar requirements. It is unusual for somebody, like somebody who's in a different country, flying in on a tourist visa, visitor visa and saying, I'm here to for taking the Red Seal examination. I don't think they will allow it. You must have a working right in that province, uh, in, that, uh, in, in Canada to be able to take the Red Seal in that, in, in that province, all right? So I hope uh, you look at the website. In Alberta, it's called tradesecrets.gov. Type tradesecrets on Google, you will see. All right, so Sanjeev here. I'm Sanjeev from Delhi. Yes, Sanjeev, I know you are Sanjeev. Uh, what is the question? I'm into business for the last 20 years to try for investor visa, try for work permit. I do not know, Sandeep Dheer, it requires that you need a separate consultation. It will take about one hour for me to decide whether you do have the necessary papers or qualifications or necessary prerequisites for investor visa or work permit. So I, I cannot give a short capsule answer for that question. It's like going to a doctor and say, hey, doctor, should I take Tylenol or Advil or should I take this or take that? We don't know. The doctor has to diagnose your symptoms first and then decide which one makes sense, all right? I had the same question with my doctor actually, and doctor said, you know, should we take um, ibuprofen or uh, you know, one of those, I forgot the name, and or maybe uh, Tylenol or one of those competing and say, we, I don't know, and you know, then they say, look, let me understand the symptoms and I can tell you this one works far faster or better, this and more. So that's why in immigration also, I need to know exactly, I need to x-ray your background so that I can tell you uh, this process is better for you than the other. All right. Uh, Pradeep man, what is Pradeep man saying? So I'm getting my visa, I can apply for LMI also. I've experienced fast food, thanks you, thanks you sir. Hats off, thank you very much. Pradeep out my hats on, my hats are man, you hats off. Thank you for from your hats off, all right. Uh, so yes, you can uh, apply uh, for after getting my visa, can I apply with LMI? No, once you have the LMI, then you apply for work visa. You know, it's, it's the other way around. So you get the LMI first, the LMI will be provided to you by the employer and then you apply for the work visa, wherever you are. So, uh, all right, so that's what it is. Um, Amateur, can I apply for both the NP and Express Entry at the same time? Yes, you can apply. There's no there's no bar of, uh, you know, precluding you from one category or the other. Yes, you, you are absolutely right. If you want to, you can also have an Express Entry file at the same time while you are considering to apply for ANP. No problem at all, no problem at all. Sanjeev Deer, thanks sir, we'll get back to you. Thanks you very much, Sanjeev Deer. I, I like the emojis here. Yes, so wonderful. Uh, guys, if you have any more question, ask me question about the law. Don't ask me general question, how to get a job or how to do other things. Ask me question about the law so that I can answer uh, your question. I see Minu Kalra is saying hello to me. Minu Kalra, hello, wherever you are. 
I say hello to you. If you have a question about immigration, you this is a chance for you to ask me the question, and I'll try to attempt to give you the answer. And that's uh, but I nice to see you, Minu Kara, wherever you are, uh, and uh, everything is. I hope everything is fine. So, uh, guys, if you do not have any more question, then I I guess I will take leave. Unless you have a question, ask me the question. I've only commented briefly about the LMIA, the, the fraud LMIA going on in, in different uh, parts of the world. And, you know, I always try to protect people from immigration fraud because uh, on an, on an, on an uh, typically general, uh, at, at the general ignorance uh, at level of the workers who are, who are being charged for money, they do not know who they are dealing with because these brokers are not uh, licensed uh, people from Canada and that's why they are able to run away with this fraud. All right, so who is here? Uh, thank you very much for, sir. I live in Edmonton, how can I reach you? My address is listed on my YouTube profile, so my phone number and WhatsApp is also listed, so you can call from there if you are in Edmonton and we can meet separately for a consultation. Uh, Minu Kala is saying, I'm Victoria. Oh, nice, you're in Victoria. Oh, should be weather is good there. Uh, so uh, if you have any question about immigration, this forum is just for immigration uh, for now. If you have any question about immigration, you, you should ask. If not, then I guess I will take leave. It's close to 6 o'clock right now, Edmonton time on November 30th. And uh, starting from, uh, I think, January uh, first week or so, the BC program is coming up with a new uh, new requirement. It's called BCPNP Regional Pilot Program, in which uh, they have lowered the threshold of investment, how much investment is needed to qualify for PNP. In a regular program, it used to be minimum 200,000, but in a, this pilot program, all you need is minimum 100,000, and your personal net worth earlier, it was 600,000, but in this one, you need only $300,000, and uh, all you have to do is uh, be prepared to live in a small regional community where the population is less than 75,000, because the BC government want people to go and uh, stir some business in the areas where there's uh, chronic uh, unemployment or maybe there's a uh, depressed economy. So that's that's all they want to do. But I made a video about that BC uh, regional pilot entrepreneur program. You should be able to see that video and look at the other information on it. But the regional communities will be declared, I think, close to uh, hopefully next month, uh, next uh, early, early January or last week of uh, December, all right? All right, so let's see who else does. Steve, I have a Vista Visa Connect work visa. You got to apply for work visa through LMI, your brother. Uh, Vista Visa, you know, you have to apply. I made many videos about this, but if you have a LMIA, then you can apply for work visa, or you must have some kind of LMIA exemption to apply for work visa. You just cannot apply for work visa until you qualify for it. So if you, if your background is something that you think that it qualifies for a work visa and you need to uh, talk to me separately and then I can look into it. Maybe you have some kind of exemption uh, on it, all right. So Minu Kala is my, both of us are here, possible when so to go to PR after the study. Minu Kala, this is a long discussion. We had this discussion uh, some time ago also. I think you might be better off uh, because where you are living in Victoria or Vancouver area, there must be many Christian consultants. I'm very far from you. So you need to talk to some consultant in that local area so that they can look at your points and look at the BCPNP. Perhaps uh, your your son will qualify for a BCPNP program in this in this area. All right. Um, uh, what else is who is this asking? Yes, sir. You What is this? Thirty thousand dollars? Thirty thousand good salary for tourism? I don't know, brother. Sorry, but like uh, thirty thousand dollars good salary for tourism. I uh, did. For, for tourist visa, salary is one of the many factors that they look at. Just because you have a $30,000 salary, that is not a determinative factor on which to yes or no on tourist visa. There are other, other factors as well. So uh, they are looking at what is your purpose of visit, why are you going there, what will you do there, what is the arrangement, who's paying for it, will you have it, uh, you know, motive or intent to return to back to your country, what are your ties to the country, and, and you know, so forth. So that's that's what is needed. Just salary alone is not enough. All right. Uh, Minu Kala is asking what kind of homework they need to. Minu Kala always uh, uh, everybody needs to have at least the job offer letter and the proof of experience ready at all times. You must have your INTS English language uh, scores valid all the time. 
plus your uh, degrees and, and your degrees and diplo diplomas, if they are from overseas, they must be evaluated all the time. So these are the basic things that require time uh, to do because evaluation of, you know, taking eyeless tests takes time. So you must have all this, these documents ready at all times, if ever you are, whenever you are ready to apply. All right, uh, so Shoei Malik, I'm in Kuwait, yes. So Shoei Malik, we don't know what, uh, you know, we have to talk separately on what are your chances for Vista visa. Vista visa is a highly discretionary visa. There's no way any lawyer consultant can pinpoint and to predict with de definite success that you will get the visa, we don't know. We can only tell you what the factors are and then ultimately it's for you to submit them to the visa officer and then, you know, have them be satisfied about your, about your reason to travel. Who is answering this? Uh, Naresh Maharaj, thank you for so much for answering, but I know in Nepal, one of the lawyers can assume send me a temporary visa when you appear in exam and certificate of it. Uh, is it possible? I don't know, Naresh. I think looks like the dicey scheme to me. First of all, how did you get the visitor visa to come to take the trade examination? It sounds dicey to me. And second, where whichever province you are going to take the Red Seal examination, you need to ask them first that on a visitor visa, can you take the uh, Red Seal examination or not? So I think this is a good start. This is what I will do. Chotu Singh, uh, Chotu Singh is asking me to call me. Chotu Singh, why would he call you? You know, I do not know who you are, where you are. If you need to talk to me, you have to uh, send me an email separately and, and do a consultation agreement, then I can talk to you. All right, so who else is asking me a question? Gaganibi Shetwal is answering. Uh, Gaganibi Shetwal, I think this guy is in Toronto. Any businessman visiting Canada on a visitor visa opens a corporate starts a business can apply for work visa for himself, key person. Yes, Gagandeep Shatwal, that is called an over owner operator LMIA. So if you don't know owner operator LMIA, I already did some uh, mention about this in the early part of this video. Uh, what you do is you go to owner operator on Google, maybe perhaps, and you can see some links, or go to Service Canada, uh, dial the Service Canada uh, 800 number and talk to them about the uh, owner operator LMIA because it is essentially an LMIA which requires uh, no advertising, but it has some conditions about how how and, and in, in what way the owner has to justify that he can run the business and his presence is critical to the sustenance of the business uh, itself. So that's what it is, yes. But technically it can be done, of course, why not? Uh, Minukala is saying thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Minukala, you're always welcome. I remember you, I met you in Delhi. So hopefully, uh, I'd love, love to meet you soon, soon or later. I, I actually, guys, uh, people who are watching this, I will be in New Delhi again in the month of uh, January first week. So I'll I'll be having some meetings and seminar in in New Delhi also, just in case if you are around and if you have something to discuss. So just keep watching my Facebook so I can meet you there. Uh, so let's see who else is asking any question. I guess no more questions. So I might just, uh, you know, should we close off now? And I've got many comments here, but uh, no other further questions. So as always, uh, uh, needless to say that I, uh, I discuss with client situations separately on a private individualized session for about one hour. Uh, separately, it's not a public, it's just a private discussion between me and you. And I look at all the background and I discuss all the salient features of your background and tell you whether you qualify for this or not. Um, if you do qualify, I will tell you, you can do the application on your own or you can hire somebody, anybody whom you like. But if you don't qualify, I'll tell you, you will not get the, you know, you'll not get, be, you'll not be successful in this application. So there's no point moving forward. And I always, uh, protect people. My motto is protecting people from immigration fraud, because if you yourself are not knowledgeable about anything, you are more likely to be defrauded by somebody who knows that you are ignorant and they can overcharge you or they can uh, offer you something else which you don't understand and it may not be successful at all. So it is always a good idea to, to get to know first of whatever uh, application that you are choosing. All right, so I think one of the last question is Gagandeep Shitwal is transportation business, he's satisfied recognition. So Gagandeep Shitwal, you know, the thing is about transportation businesses, uh, you know, this is this is not a very specialized business. If you think that somebody with a with a driver license can come here and buy one or two trucks and say, hey, I'm the owner of the business. So one of one of the one of the requirements for owner operator LMIA is that is the business quite specific enough for the owner to justify that he is the only person who can run this business. 
for a transportation business, I don't think it's very specialized and it is a discretion on the um, on on the service candidate to approve it or not. I mean, if I'm if I'm the uh, person who's looking at this file, I'm I'm more likely not to approve this application because it does not look like to me that somebody who's making a company and he buys some trucks and then claiming that he is the only person who can run the business and and make it successful and make it make it grow. Uh, that doesn't seem like the case. They can hire any other drivers, and I'm sure in Ontario areas. Uh, there are hundreds of other drivers who can be hired at the same time. Let me give you another example of our owner operator success story where I did a case where somebody was a software engineer uh, from Bangalore. So he, he had some ideas about, you know, some, some key uh, software skills that he was trying to, um, you know, establish in Canada. So he formed a company because this software uh, knowledge was inherent with the company itself and with the person who was himself a software engineer, he could successfully prove it to the Service Canada that without his presence in Canada, the company cannot flourish and he need to be there. And Service Canada agreed. So this is a good example where it looks like without you, it cannot happen so that we need to give you a work permit so that you can grow this business and then hire other people. But can you say this about transportation business? looks so very tentative to me uh, maybe you have a difference of opinion but that's that's the way i feel all right all right so let's say who else is answering uh, no i'm answering question was asking question thanks a lot do you have any plan to come to gulf or any seminar show it malik i do not know i'm i'm talking to some people who come to dubai but hey uh, if you have a plan or uh, to me i need enough people to justify the trip because if i come there we've got to spend some money there i need about at least 10 to 20 people so that uh, you know, when I charge the consultation fees, it, it justifies the cost of coming there and hotel and trip and everything. So if you if you have about ten to twenty people at the least, uh, then you know why not? I, I can swim by in Dubai. I have been to Dubai at least uh, once or twice, uh, and I remember the big uh, Burj Khalifa and with dancing fountains and and big fish in the in the mall. It's it's a lovely place. All right, uh, who else? Pretty man, being a student, we can apply for from Delhi. Yeah, this is enough. Pradeeman, yes, if you if you are in Ireland, if you have an LMIA job offer, yes, you can apply for work permit. But you know, still uh, your your immigration history in Ireland is disclosed to the visa officer, and you know, they must be wondering uh, what on earth were you doing in Ireland for how long and whether you were you had a successful uh, you know history of being in Ireland. And I hope there's no other problem. All right, Governor Mitri Twal say thank you very much. Thank you, Governor Mitri. Hope to see you sometime in Toronto. Ahmed Jiro, to one of the last questions. Ahmed Jiro, uh, I'd like to meet you in person. I don't know, in post I don't finish. Uh, yeah, I got a full time position. Yeah, Ahmed Jiro, just call me tomorrow. Uh, right now it's, uh, it's evening time. Call me tomorrow. My number is on my channel and also on the Facebook. Uh, call me, take an appointment, and then uh, we will meet. All right. Uh, I think so. Ahmed Jiro must be the last comment that I will, I will use. And um, uh, that's it. Uh, I guess. Uh, uh, we will uh, we will take a leave now, and I hope uh, everybody uh, well and with the immigration plans. And as usual, don't forget to subscribe my channel on YouTube, and that's where you can ask questions. And my motto is always: we we save immigration lives by one consultation at a time. All right. Thank you very much. Hey, somebody's asking a question now. I'm sure okay, you ask. What are the requirements of a Canadian resident to hire a foreign worker? Uh, Gagandhi Shital, this is this is a question related to LMIA, all right? So you need to go to Service Canada website, go and, and type on top how to hire a foreign worker, uh, skilled and unskilled, both of them, and then look at the requirements. You will see all the requirements for the LMIA. I think that's, that's, what, uh, that's what you need for now, all right? Gosh, one more question I, I wanted to leave. So, Sandy Malpreet, if someone is on a visitor visa, have an AZ license, then what is it easy to do? Uh, I've already answered this question, Mr. Malpreet. I think you need a LMIA job offer from a trucking company so that you can apply for the work visa. All right, that's uh, that's that's the easiest, uh, shortest answer I can say. Pratiman, we've already subscribed. So, thank you, Pratiman. I hope to see you sometime and uh, good luck for everybody. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, I hope uh, to see you again and uh, good luck for your future endeavors. All right. Thank you.